So welcome to the second lab. Um, my name's Philip, if you haven't met me already. Um, and so today, um, the outline of things that we're gonna cover are STAR, and with that comes SLURM, um, also RCQC, and then RSAM and SAMIN. Um, so these are all things that are gonna be very um, important for completing the homework. Um, like I said, you know, feel free to go onto Canvas under module one and download the slides. Um, and also, you know, please SSH in the Canon um, because at some point I'm going to ask you to try something out just so uh, just so I can teach you guys like how to start a job on Canon. Um, yeah, and I think the focus is going to be on like running these as opposed to like what the algorithms do because that that was kind of covered in, in lecture. Um, all right, so let's just start with star. Um, it stands for splice transcripts alignment to a reference. Um, and so if you're in lecture today, um, you'll see that when you're doing RNA seq, um, you know, the reads that you get, they don't, they, they aren't coming from contiguous locations in the genome, right? Because when transcription happens, there's exons and introns on a gene. Um, and then these introns get spliced out and maybe these exons get permuted in some way or some of them get thrown out um, to produce the mature transcript. Um, and so when you're doing alignment on RNA-seq, you really need an aligner that realizes that the reads are, are going to be that way. And so like uh, Professor Liu said, STAR is probably the state of the art um, for splice-aware alignment. Um, and so I won't get too much into the details of the algorithm, but I think this figure really gives a nice like overview of what, what it's basically doing. So like if your reads up here um, and then the gray parts can be thought of as the exon for which the read might have came from or the, the exons of a gene. Um, so star, for example, it's star is okay with just mapping the first half of the read to some part. And then if all of a sudden the rest of the read won't map, star will say, okay, I'll look later on to see if the second part of the read can be mapped. So like the first half maps to this gray region and the second half maps to this gray region that's possibly separated by um, an intron, which, which could be fairly large. Um, yeah, so, I mean, star, I guess it uses a, a suffix array um, to kind of, the way that you can think about this is what star is basically doing, it's building like a humongous hash table so that it can ef efficiently take in an input read and then find where in the human genome or where in any genome that this read came from. I mean, so what you have to know, especially for this homework is that, you know, star aligns very fast, um, but the cost of it being fast is that it's going to require a huge amount of memory. Um, you know, for, for most mammalian genomes, star is going to take probably 30 to 50, well, maybe 20 to 40 gigabytes of, of RAM to kind of read in this huge hash table. I um, mean, so this is why we're making everybody do the computation on Canon because we don't think that, um, we don't think that most people have that kind of resource um, like on a personal laptop, for example. Um, okay, and so like if you have the, the raw slides or the file like on your computer, um, it might be nice to browse through the reference manual for STAR. It will show you how to do a lot more advanced things that, that kind of won't be covered here. Okay, yeah, so I'm just gonna briefly talk about CAN. I mean, I know Martin probably covered that last weekend, last week, but I mean, basically Canon is a supercomputer or a cluster, which basically means that it's a lot of small computers called nodes, which we call nodes, and they're combined to, to work together as kind of one giant computer. Um, so what you need to know is in each of these small computers, are going to be doing a different task to kind of serve the good of the of the larger computer. So there are there are kind of basically two kinds of nodes that that you'll encounter on Canon. The first is login nodes, and these are the ones that you go to when you first SSH into Canon. And so you can tell if you're on a login node by looking at like the thing after the at on your username. So this says Boston. This stands for Boston login three. So it's probably the third node 
in Boston, and it's a login node. Um, and what you have to, to know about these is these basically serve just to get you on the cluster um, and allow you to look around at different files, but you really shouldn't be doing any intensive computations on the login nodes. And in fact, it probably will stop you from doing so. Um, it's also about being a good citizen of the cluster since if you're doing heavy computations on the login node, it's going to make the login node slow because it's not designed to do that. And it's gonna make Canon slow for, for the other users. So really, if you're gonna do something like star, you need to go to a compute node. Um, and so the point of this slurm that I'm gonna talk about is it's going to get you from the login node to the compute node so that you can run things like star. So how do you go from a login node to a compute node? Well, first you need to specify what you want. So for example, you might say, I want 500 gigabytes of RAM and I want a thousand CPUs, um, right? That's obviously quite a lot of computational power and, and Canon has enough to do that. Um, but um, if everybody asked for that all at once, then everything would get filled up and there'd be, I guess, no, no room for anybody else to do anything. So basically Canon has a job manager called Slurm that I guess manages the user requests. And for example, like it will decide when to give you what job um, and, and how, how it kind of like ranks all the jobs deciding which one gets to go when. Um, yeah, so, so for example, and this might be something that, that, you, that you take down. So like I said, for star, you, you really need 10 to 20 gigabytes at least of RAM. Um, so to be safe, if I was doing this problem, I might say, I want 64 gigabytes of RAM and I want 16 CPUs um, and I want it for two hours. You also have to specify how long you think your job's going to run. And one way to do that, so there, there are kind of two ways to run jobs. Um, today, I'm just gonna talk about interactive jobs because I think they're a little simpler um, to start out with. So the command here is S run and that stands for slurm run. Um, and then, so the rest of this is just specifying what I want. Nodes and number of tasks for node can always be one. Um, probably for this piece set because you know I'm only going to do one job really. I'm just going to run star on on one file on one sample. Um, mem that stands for memory. Um, CPUs per task uh, eight. Um, that seems to be a good number. Sixteen is also also possible. Um, time this two hours, and then I want a bash shell, and then. The minus I stands for interactive. Um, so that means it's gonna give me a terminal on the compute node for which I can type in commands like, interactively. So for those of you, oh, okay. So if I type this in and I press enter, then first I'll see S run. This job, it has an ID number, has been queued and it's waiting for resources. Um, next, it gets allocated the resources. And then all of a sudden I go to this new, I have this new, I guess, ID for what node I'm on. It says holy, and that stands for holy oak. Um, and it, it's not a login node. So I've successfully gone to the compute node. And so, right, this can take probably a moment or two. Um, so what I want you guys to try is, so for those of you who are on Canada right now, I was hoping you guys could put in this job, which is a very tiny job. It's only asking for eight gigabytes of RAM for 10 minutes. Um, so can you guys give that, give that a shot? Also, I can't see the chat right now. Um, so maybe Jack, if, if there are any like questions in the chat, you can like relay them to me. Sure. Is this working? Has anybody tried this yet? Is this working?
Would you like me to, would you like me to do it too? Yeah, that would be helpful. Okay, great. So let me just, oops. Are you still seeing my screen? Yep. Yes. So are you seeing a terminal now? Yeah. I need to copy. Okay, let's try this. Okay. So I'm on, uh, so I'm at a login node. So let's copy and paste this in and let's see what happens. Okay, I press enter. <clears throat> okay, so it's queued and now it's waiting. So I had, okay, great, awesome. So it worked. Um, I don't know if it was gonna be slow because everybody's asking for it. So you see now I'm not on a login node. I'm on a node called C's micro three. Um, and so now like, you know, the same, I can still do the same commands, LS, all the files are still there. I can still go to the stat 115 folder. And it's slow for some reason, but, um, but yeah, so I think, yeah, so this is how you start, start a job. And I don't, yeah, so it's, it's, it can be kind of slow sometimes. There it goes. But yeah, and so since I only asked for 10 minutes, what will happen after 10 minutes is it'll just sh shut down, even if I was in the middle of something. And so make sure you specify enough time. And so to get back to the login node, I just type exit um, and then the job's done. Um, I can also type S account, S-A-C-C-T. Um, and it shows a history of all the jobs that I've asked for. So the one that I just asked for is completed. Um, yeah. Any questions about that? I have a quick question. Um, if you were done before the time you allocate it and you type exit, does it kind of free up the resources or do you have to be really like mindful of exactly how much time you ask for? No, I think it frees up when you exit. Um, I, um, what you have to be mindful of is if you ask for like 20 hours, it's gonna sit there queued for like uh, forever. Um, okay. so that's, that's the main factor when you're considering how much to ask for, you want to ask for enough, but really not much over. Otherwise you're going to sit there forever. I'm um, in wait. Any other questions? Okay. So let's show how we can actually run star then. Um, so, okay. So I'm going to give you like an overview of the steps that I might do to run star. Um, so step one, obviously, is to start an interactive job, or you can do a batch job, but we can talk about that a little bit later for those who are interested in batch jobs. Um, so first, I start the interactive job. I go to my compute node. I've asked for enough resources, I've asked for enough time. Um, step two, or I get, this is all step one. I also make sure that once I'm on the compute node, I go to my home directory. Um, I'll talk a little bit more about this later. Um, but basically we don't want you writing any files to the stat 115 folder. So just make sure you're putting it in your personal directory and you can go to that by typing CD home with this dollar sign. Um, next, you're going to load the module. You're gonna load the star module. You can think about this as like in Python, you might import pandas, um, for example, in R you might load a library by calling library. This is the same idea. You're just going to load, I guess, star um, onto the compute node. Um, and the basic command is, is literally just to type star. Um, but then obviously followed by star, there's a lot of different options that you need to specify to make sure that it does what you want. Okay, very quickly, um, like I said at the beginning, star accomplishes its speed by creating this kind of huge hash table for the human genome. Um, 
And so I want to briefly tell you guys how we made this. Um, this is actually not required since we've already done this step for you. Um, and it also takes like several hours. Um, but basically, after you type star, you can type dash dash run mode genome generate. This is going to like generate, I guess, the suffix array for the genome. Um, and then you have to specify, okay, a genome FASTA file. Um, so that's like a FASTA file is like the raw sequence of the human genome. And then you also have to give it like annotations to say like, where in the sequence are the known genes um, and so on. Um, so if you wanna try this, it's totally optional, um, but I've put the files in HG38 raw, the raw like human genome sequence, if you wanted to try making the index yourself, um, but it's not required. So let's talk about the thing that is required, um, which is to perform the alignment. Um, and so the basic command is going to look something like this. You type into your, I guess, you type into Canon star and then dash dash genome directory, which is index path. Or genome directory, this is the path to the genome index that we made in step two. And we saved it here at style 115, homework one, star HD38 index. So that's what you'd put here. Next, uh, the read files in. These are where you put your FASTQ files. Um, and so if it's paired in and you have two FASTQ files, you can just separate them by a space. So you can put two FASTQ files here. And then finally, um, you can think of threads as like, how many things at once are you gonna be able to do? So like, if you can do some things in parallel, then it's gonna go faster. Um, and four or eight seems to be a good number for this assignment. Um, so I got this to run in around 15 minutes um, with the, the resources that I've asked for. Um, I guess any, any questions about, I guess, this call? So we would run the first like basic star command and then this. Uh, this should, so like, oh, no, no, no. So what I meant by this is that the basic command to do anything in star is, is star, but then you have to, it has to be followed by options. So what I meant is like, if you wanna do run mode genome generate, then you type star space dash dash genome generate. If instead oh, okay. you just want to do alignment, you type star space. There's no, the, the default mode is alignment. So you don't have to say anything, but then you just have to specify where the index is and where your FASTQ files are. Yeah. Okay, that makes sense. Thank you. Sorry, what was the run thread N8 means again? So threads, basically can be thought of as, so if you have eight threads, then you can do eight things. You're, the computer can do eight things at once. And so that's kind of helpful um, in, in this situation because like, um, I don't know exactly how STAR does it, but presumably you can parallelize some of the work and then you can do like eight things at once. I guess like you can just like split all the reads into eight groups and do them in parallel. Um, and so that will make it run faster. Um, yeah, so that threads and CPUs are kind of the same thing, but, but not really. Um, but you can also think of them as like cores. Um, yeah. Okay, thank you. Sorry, do you just type in that command to load star, right? When I paste it in, it says command not found. Module load this didn't work. Oh, uh, oh, I didn't include the module, I think, yeah. Yeah, 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 sorry, yeah. So module load, yeah. And if you don't know what star is called, you can, al you can always type module query and then like some string, like if you didn't know like what version you wanted, you can always type module dash query star and it'll tell you what versions you have available. Okay, so 
Step four is to view the results. Um, and so I guess star creates output files um, that will be useful for answering problem one in the homework, which I think just asks you to like say what percent of reads are mappable, which percent of reads are unmappable. So I guess I have a question for you guys. Suppose that I have a file. Um, it's like, suppose it's a text file. I guess, how can I view it? Or what's the easiest way to view the contents of that file on Canon? Can anybody give me the command? Less. Wait, L, like L-E-S-S? -S? Yeah. How does that work? <laughs> okay. Yeah, I mean, I I was thinking about cat. Is that the same thing? Yeah, actually, I, I think last words, but let, let, let me confirm. Yeah, I mean, I, I honestly, I don't use. Less gives you a scrollable buffer. Cat oh. prints everything. OK, so maybe cat's slightly easier for small files. Um, but yeah, OK. OK. But you can also try that. Or you can even open like a tech, yeah, an editor. Yeah, but that might be useful. So for example, I think we ask you um, to copy this report and just paste it into your R Markdown file. Um, and so you can just print the contents, copy and paste it um, over to your R Markdown. Let's see. Yeah, so for example, like include like your bash command, which is basically gonna be like one line um, where it tells you to. Um, all right, common mistakes that I just wanna talk about briefly. Um, so if you don't specify the time, then like I said, it's gonna shut off in the middle um, and it's not going, and you're not gonna get the results. So specify at least 30 minutes. I like to specify two hours um, just to be safe. Um, I think if you choose run thread to be larger than CPUs per task, um, you might get an error. I'm not actually positive about this. Generally, you want to choose threads to be a little bit num little bit less than the, the number of CPUs you requested. I mean, the final error um, that hasn't really been an error is, so we actually don't want you guys to save the results to stat115 folder. We want them to save them to your home folder, and that's for a variety of reasons. One being that it basically gives other students the answers if you save it to the stat115 folder. Um, and so I guess any files we see in there will be deleted. So yeah. Okay, so any, any last questions on STAR? We can do some- I had a question, here. sorry. So just to make sure, but we'll be running this through our studio, right? Not just in the terminal. I guess the, the HTML file that you're gonna submit is generated with RStudio. Um, you don't actually have to run, so you can put like eval equals false in your RStudio R markdown file. Um, so you're not actually gonna run the bash command locally. Um, you just show us what you did. Um, I see, okay. And if it looks reasonable, um, yeah. So we only need to submit the results of running star, not the commands we use necessarily to run it or both. No, no, no. So I'm saying you have to submit. So you have to like copy and paste, say these are the commands that I use to run it. Okay. But we're not going to like, there's no way to run it locally, probably. Um, and we're not going to run the bash either. Um, does that make sense? It's like we yeah. want the commands, but it, you can put like eval equals false on the chunk. Um, so it doesn't actually run when you try to knit it. Okay, perfect, thank you. Yeah. Um, I have another question. Sure. Uh, how do we save the new file to uh, our home directory? Because like when I run uh, the star command, uh, it says that I, I, I'm not able, we do not, I don't have permission to write uh, in the directory, so I don't know where to, So are you, tr that might be because you're trying to write to the stat 115 directory. Yeah, I know, um, but how can I change that? So the easiest way is to run the command star in your home directory. Um, and then 
when it's time to specify okay, the okay. genome directory, you give the absolute path, which is here. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So that's what Thank I you. recommend. Yeah. The output of star. Um, so one of the questions on the homework, it asks how many leads are mappable. Mm -hmm. Does that include uniquely mappable leads, leads mapped to multiple loci and leads mapped to too many loci? Like all three of those? Yeah. So I think, so are there any reads mapped to too many loci? I got that there were some. Like oh. it's a relatively small number, but that there yeah. were some. And I wasn't sure if like, if it's mapped to too many loci, whether that counts as mappable. Yeah, let's say that's mappable. Um, also just say like, I considered mappable to be reads that are mapped to too many loci, mapped any reads that map to any number of loci. Okay, perfect, yep. thank you. 